Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about some pancreatic procedures which are commonly performed on the pancreas. These procedures include not just operations but also certain procedures which help with the treatment of certain pancreatic conditions. So before we start talking about all the procedures that are performed on the pancreas, just going to recap the anatomy of the pancreas and what is lying around the pancreas, which is very important in these procedures. So this is our gullet or the esophagus that opens into our stomach, which is like a big bag. You can see the black line over there. Stomach opens into the first part of our small intestine, which is shaped like a C called the duodenum. In the C of the duodenum sits this structure, which I've drawn in green, it looks like a leaf. And that is the pancreas. The bulkiest part of the pancreas, which lies in the C, is the head of the pancreas. This is the neck of the pancreas, which is the narrower part of the pancreas. Then the body of the pancreas, which lies behind the stomach. The sit stomach is literally sitting on it. And the last bit of the pancreas, which is like a tail of the snake, is the tail of the pancreas. And this is tucked inside this structure called the spleen. Also very important in different procedures of the pancreas is the liver, which is this big structure which I have drawn with a crisscross hash on it. From the liver comes two ducts which are called the hepatic ducts. On the side of it is sitting a pouch-like structure called the gallbladder. I am sure you have all heard of gallstones which happen in this structure. And the tube that comes down is called the bile duct. And this comes down, runs behind the duodenum and runs through the pancreas and opens into the duodenum. So this duct will bring bile into the duodenum to help digest our fats. And this tube in the middle of the pancreas, which is called the pancreatic duct, will bring all the enzymes from the pancreas and drains them into the small intestine again to help digest our proteins, fats and carbohydrates and some vitamins as well. If you are unsure about the anatomy and the function of the pancreas, please watch my video on the link below. Now we are going to talk about different procedures that are done on the pancreas and where they are done in relation to this picture. So the first procedure we are going to talk about is stenting. Now, stenting is done through a camera test or an endoscopy which is put through the mouth into the stomach into this part of the duodenum and a little tube either could be made out of plastic or it made out of very special metal can be put either inside the pancreatic duct and also sometimes inside the bile duct depending on where the blockage is and this is usually done for the blockage of the pancreatic duct or blockage of the bile duct and when the stent is put in the plastic tube goes across the blockage. So if this bit of the pancreatic duct is blocked, is tight or narrow for whatever reason, scarring or whatever reason, then the tube will go across it and helps drain the pancreas. If there is a narrowing in the bile duct in this area, then the tube is put across this narrowing or blockage and that will help drain the bile duct. And the camera test which is performed to do this stenting is called ERCP or Endoscopic Retrograde Cholangiopancreatography. The second procedure we are going to talk about, which is again not an uncommon procedure to be done, is drainage of the pancreatic cyst or pseudocyst of the pancreas. When sometimes pancreas gets inflamed called acute pancreatitis, then when it heals, it heals by forming cysts. Now these cysts are pockets full of fluid and the fluid is quite clear fluid, like almost like yellow straw color fluid, like urine. And when sometimes these cysts become very large, they can cause pain and discomfort to the patient. And they usually lie behind the stomach. So this is the stomach and the cyst, this big cyst in this case, is lying behind the stomach. So basically cyst is there and the stomach is sitting on top of it. Many of these cysts do not require any treatment if they are very small and not causing much trouble to the patient. However, when they become very large, painful and not letting the patient eat, etc. because it hurts when they eat, then they can be drained. How can they be drained? 
They can drain through a endoscopic procedure with a camera in very special centers. And the camera comes into the stomach and with an ultrasound scan on the camera, they can find out where the cyst is and they can puncture a hole through the stomach into the cyst and drain all the fluid into the stomach. It's not done very, free, very commonly in every center, but some specialized centers can do that. However, the commoner procedure that are performed in many, many centers are draining the cyst with a keyhole camera. So under general anesthetic, a keyhole procedure is performed through the abdominal wall. And with two or three instruments, the front of the stomach is opened up. And from the back of the stomach, the surgeon makes a hole from the stomach into the cyst. So all the cyst fluid comes out into the stomach. And then with the keyhole, they can close the hole in the stomach in the front and the cyst is allowed to drain into the stomach. The third way of doing it, which is still performed in many places, many centers around the world and even in this country, is with an open operation. So a cut made on the tummy, cyst is found, a hole is made in the stomach and the cyst is drained into the stomach and the hole of the stomach is closed. Sometimes when the cyst is not lying behind the stomach, so can't be drained into the stomach easily, but say sticking out from the bottom of the pancreas over here, and it, this can't be drained into the stomach easily, then surgeon will bring a bit of small intestine and attach it to the cyst, so cyst can drain into the small intestine. So the next procedure we are going to talk about is called distal pancreatectomy. To understand what distal means, there are two words used in anatomy called proximal and distal. They are opposite to each other. Distal means away from the center or away from the attachment site. Proximal means closer to the attachment site. In the case of the pancreas, the head of the pancreas we already talked about is attached to this part of the duodenum with the bile duct coming through it and the pancreatic duct opening into it. So this bit is attached to the duodenum. So this will be the proximal part of the pancreas. Anything going further away from it is called the distal part of the pancreas. Now, when is distal pancreatectomy performed? So this part of the pancreas, when will it be removed? So in this case, I've drawn a little lump in the body or tail of the pancreas or at the junction of the body and tail of the pancreas. You can see this lump. This lump can be a big cyst. This lump can be a suspected cancer or it might actually be a cancer of the pancreas or a benign tumor of the pancreas which needs to be removed because it is causing trouble to the patient. To remove this, surgeon will have to cut across this part of the pancreas. They usually staple this part of the pancreas and the body and part of the tail will be removed. So this part of the whole pancreas will be removed. So the patient will be left with only this bit of the pancreas left. As you can see, I've drawn this red line going across top of it, which is the major blood vessel which goes into the spleen and comes out to the spleen. This lies right on top of the pancreas and sometimes the tumors of the body and tail of the pancreas can get stuck to this blood vessel. And removing the tumor from the blood vessel is sometimes not possible. And if that is not possible, then that blood vessel has to be removed with part of the pancreas. When the blood vessel to the spleen is gone, then inevitably the spleen will have to be removed. So in many patients who require a distal pancreatectomy, the spleen is also have to be removed because it is too close to the tumor or the blood vessel going to the spleen has to be sacrificed to get rid of the tumor completely. The next operation we are going to talk about is called Whipple procedure. Again, a commonly performed procedure for pancreatic tumors. It's a major, major operation. Can be done through a keyhole in certain centers, but in vast majority of centers at the moment, because the expertise of the keyhole with these huge procedures is limited, will be performed through an open cut on the tummy. So with an open procedure. What is the difference between distal pancreatectomy and Whipple's procedure? Distal pancreatectomy, as you might remember, had a lump in this part of the pancreas a tumor or a cyst or whatever, or a suspected tumor. In Whipple's procedure, the, the problem is in the head of the pancreas 
or in this part of the duodenum. The problem with this part of the pancreas is very major structures go through this part of the pancreas. So pancreas, as I explained earlier, is attached to the duodenum with the pancreatic duct and the bile duct. Bile duct goes through the pancreas. So it is a tumor in this part. It will be attached to this part of the duodenum. It will be attached to the bile duct. It will be attached to the pancreatic duct. And all these will have to be removed to get rid of the tumor. So if this tumor is removed, for instance, what will we be left with? So after removing the tumor of the head of the pancreas, this is what we are left with. So surgeon has removed the gallbladder. Gallbladder has to go. The reason is because if the gallbladder is left behind, the patient, if they develop gallstones or anything in the future, which they have slightly higher chance of developing after the surgery, then removing the gallbladder can be very difficult because all the scarring and everything happens in this place. Part of the bile duct which was going through the tumor has been cut. So the bile duct you can see is cut across and is just hanging in the breeze. The duodenum has been removed. The sea of the duodenum is gone. So that there is a top bottom end of the stomach at the top which is cut across is open. Bottom end of the duodenum which was coming across here like a C has been cut across. So this is the small intestine beyond the duodenum. Pancreas has been cut across. So the whole lot of the tumor is gone. Now the problem is we are left with a bile duct which is cut across, stomach which is cut across, pancreas which is cut across and the small intestine beyond the duodenum which is cut across. All needs all these needs to be joined to the intestine so that everything can drain back into the small intestine. Surgeons do reconstruction of all those cut bits in different ways. There are a few variations of it. One of the variations I've shown over here, which basically tells you what the principle of it is, they bring a bit of the small intestine, which was cut across earlier, bring it up. They stitch it to the bile duct, bottom end of the bile duct. They stitch the stomach, which was open after duodenum was removed, again to this bit of the small intestine. And the pancreas, which was cut across again, is stitched to this part of the small intestine. So the bile is draining into the small intestine again. The stomach with the food that we eat also drains into this bit of the small intestine. And the pancreas, which is left behind after removing the tumor, is also draining into this part of the small intestine. This is a very major operation and um, done in very specialized centers only. Now you might ask me, I did not talk about an operation in which the whole of the pancreas is removed operation called total pancreatectomy, which means the head of the pancreas will be removed, the body of the pancreas will be removed, and the tail of the pancreas will be removed, the whole lot will be removed. The reason I did not talk about that operation, although it is performed sometimes, but only sometimes, the reason is because not many conditions of the pancreas require the whole of the pancreas to be removed. And the second problem with the whole of the pancreas to be removed is the patient becomes very badly diabetic and the controlling the diabetes is can be very tricky. Hence, an operation which is performed very infrequently, only for certain conditions in certain specialized centers, especially the patient can be offered pancreatic transplant at the same time. I hope you found this video informative, gave you some insight into different procedures of the pancreas. I'm sure there are many other pancreatic procedures which I have not mentioned in this video these were the procedures which are quite frequently performed. If you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comments below and I will be happy to answer those questions if I can. If you like this video, then please remember to subscribe and like our video. Thank you for watching.